Hi, boys and girls. Thank you for coming to Story Circle to hear this book, Horses, by Gail Gibbons. Gail Gibbons always gives us lots of wonderful information in her marvelous books. In a lush green meadow, a herd of animals is grazing. One of them neighs. Another shakes its mane. Horses. What powerful, graceful, and majestic animals they are. Today, there are three basic sizes of horses. The smallest are called ponies. Next are the draft horses, or sorry, the light horses. And the biggest are the draft horses. There are many different kinds of purebred horses around the world. A purebred horse has a mother and father from the same breed. A crossbred horse has at least one parent that is not a purebred. And do you see something special on this page like I do? Look at this. We've got a couple of Tennessee walkers. So that is something very special about our state. Almost all horses have the same basic characteristics. Here we have an American saddle horse and some of the special parts of the horse, of course, horses have a mane and a tail. This hair that grows down on the fore forehead of a horse is called the forelock. This is the horse's muzzle. Horses have really big nostrils. This is the horse's cheek. And horses have large eyes. This is the horse's, these are the ears, of course. They can use their ears, turn them all different directions, can't they? Um, a horse has a knee here on the front legs. This is the horse's fetlock and hoof. And we're going to find out something interesting about that. And then on the back legs, Horses have a hock instead of a knee, so their joint bends the other way, which is kind of interesting. This is the horse's flank, and right here at the top of the horse's shoulder, that is the withers, and that's going to be important for something we're going to learn here. A horse's height is measured in hands from its withers to the ground. One hand equals four inches. A horse less than 14 inches, 14 hands, 2 inches from its withers to the ground is a pony. So that's the only thing that distinguishes a pony from another kind of horse is just the size of it. And you can imagine why people measure horses from their withers. Do you think it would be hard to get a horse to stand still and keep his head in a certain spot so you could measure him from the top of his head to the ground? like you do when you go to the doctor's office. So that's why we measure a horse from its withers. Kind of interesting. A horse's foot has a heel and a single toe. So this goes back to our mystery box. Horses run on four toes, which fits into a thick toenail called a hoof. The outside layer of a hoof is called the wall. Horses are the only animals that stand on only one toe on each foot. Kind of interesting to think of. Horses that are used for riding or doing work can wear down and damage their hooves. They need to wear horseshoes to protect their hooves. A horseshoe is nailed to the wall of the hoof. So this part over here. And it would be kind of like... Um, if you had really long fingernails and you poked something through your fingernail, you wouldn't feel it at all, would you? Just like you don't, it doesn't hurt you if you break or bite your fingernail, right? A horse has very strong legs. The two front legs carry most of the horse's body weight when moving. The hind legs provide the thrust forward, they push the horse forward. The way a horse moves its legs and places its hooves on the ground to move forward is called the horse's gait. These gaits go from slow, like a walk. Notice when the horse is walking, he's got 
three feet on the ground, this one foot is, is up. So this is a slow pace. And then all the way up to galloping. Look at how he's, when he's um, running, he, at some times he has all four feet off the ground. How about that? The horse's gait. So it's walk, trot, canter, and then gallop. When a horse is galloping, he's running as fast as he can. Horses drink a lot of water. They are called herbivores. Now think about our song. What do herbivores eat? They don't eat meat, right? They only eat plants. Wild horses and domesticated horses graze on grass. They like to eat grass. Domesticated horses are also given oats and other grains for nourishment. Horses enjoy treats such as apple slices, carrots, and sugar cubes. They love sugar cubes. A horse gets all its air for breathing through its nostrils. It doesn't breathe through its mouth as other animals do. So if you watch a dog running, you'll notice that it will open its mouth oftentimes to breathe. And if you think about yourself running really hard for a while, you will definitely be breathing through your mouth. But horses only breathe through their large nostrils. A horse has large, wide nostrils to take large amounts of air into its large lungs. And this tremendous breathing power allows a horse to run and run and run. So horses are fast, but they also have incredible endurance. Horses are very social animals. They prefer to live in groups. In the wild, a herd of horses is usually made up of a stallion and its mares. One stallion will fight another that's trying to take one of its mares. Horses can whinny or make other sounds that mean different things. They also communicate using different body movements. So it's a good idea when you're around horses that you can pay attention to the horse's body language. <clears throat> if a horse, um, if the ears are facing forward and upright, the horse is alert, interested, paying attention. But when the horse lays its ears flat back on its head like this, it can mean that the horse is uh, nervous or feeling aggressive. When two horses nuzzle up to each other, that's usually because they're friends. When a horse gives a little twitch of its tail, sometimes it's just because maybe a fly has landed on it or something and it's got a little tickle or itch, but it can also mean that the horse is nervous. So you want to watch out for signs like that that tell you that a horse is feeling anxious. This position right here when the horse has its back feet on the ground and its upper body lifted up that is called um, rearing and horses can do that playfully they'd sometimes do that just because they're excited but they can also be doing that to display their power and this is bucking when a horse kicks out its rear legs like this this is bucking and again that can be playful or it can be aggressive, and a lot of times that's how horses try to get somebody off of them that's on their back. They buck the rider off. Horses have a better sense of hearing than people do. They also have an excellent sense of smell that can help them recognize each other. Horses are very sensitive to the scent of people. So even if these people, if the horse can't see them, they're hiding behind this hill, uh, she can smell them easily. Horses have excellent eyesight, which help prote helps protect them in the wild. Their eyes can move independently of each other. That means they can look forward with one eye and behind with the other eye at the same time. Isn't that kind of a cool superpower that God has given to horses? I think that would be neat to be able to do that. The eyes of a horse are larger than the eyes of any other land animal. Wow, that's cool. They get the blue ribbon for having the biggest eyes. That's awesome. At about three years of age, a mare, a mommy horse, can give birth. 
After it mates with a stallion, the mare gives birth in about one year. So she grows that baby for a whole year. And of course, we know that horses are viviparous. So the baby is born alive. This usually happens in the springtime. And that little baby horse that's born is called a foal. If it's a female horse, then it will be called a filly. And if it's a male horse, it will be called a colt. The daddy horse is a sire. The mommy horse is called a dame. So he's a stallion. She's a mare. This right here, girl horse, is a filly. Right after birth, the mother licks its foal to clean and comfort it and keep it warm. The foal rests for maybe about 15 minutes or so. And then... It tries standing on its awkward legs. Its legs are very wobbly. But as its legs become steady, the foal stands firmly on all four, and the foal begins drinking its mother's warm milk. They are mammals, right? So we know that's something very special about mammals. They make milk for their babies. And isn't that amazing that a foal can stand up and walk right from birth? That's pretty amazing. Now six months have gone by and the foal has gotten bigger. It frisks around the meadow and nibbles the fresh green grass. And it's time for the foal to be weaned. At this point, the foal will be called a weanling. That means it will start eating just grown up food and it will not drink its mommy's milk anymore. Now the weanling is older. Its body has grown to fit its long, strong legs. When it's one year old, it's called a yearling. It's old enough to be taught simple tasks and good manners. And eventually, it might grow up to have its own babies. Horses and their young should be cared for properly by their owners at all times. Often a stable or barn protects the horses from bad weather. Inside, the horses are kept in stalls. The stalls must be kept clean. Horses may be, must be kept well fed and watered. They require a lot of care. Grooming means taking care of a horse's body. This should be done once daily. Grooming makes a horse look beautiful. An owner uses many different kinds of tools to groom a horse. Here are some of the tools you might need. So it's a big job to groom a horse and to do that daily to keep the horse clean and feeling great. Different breeds of horses are known for their own special characteristics. For example, the Arabian horse is the oldest breed in the world. They are beautiful, strong horses. The fastest animal in the world at running the mile is the thoroughbred horse. These are the kinds of horses that run the Kentucky Derby, for example. And the quarter horse gets its name uh, from running at uh, the quarter mile race really super fast. Um, let's see what else we can see here. Um, we've got these Clydesdale horses. They're big, huge draft horses. Draft horses are working horses that are really good at pulling things. And then y'all recognize this horse, I bet. We learned about the Appaloosa horses uh, and the Nez Perce Indians. Remember our um, Appaloosa ornament that we made that a uh, Nez Perce Indian would have put on the horse's forelock to dress him up for battle and that sort of thing. Here's some more special horses. Um, we've got a uh, rodeo horse here, a circus horse. This makes me think of Pippi Longstocking. And then here we have a Tennessee walker. A Tennessee walker is special because of its special type of gait. And they're often used in horse shows. Pretty cool. Horses. The best thing of all about horses is they are good friends and companions. Thank you so much for coming to Story Circle to listen to that book.